this oil adapter leaks, I gotta take it off and reseal it. And it's all the way down there. I read that it takes a T60 Torx to get in there. This is a crappy little uh, Cornwell socket. Let's see if it fits. Well, that's not gonna work. It's making contact with the frame rail. Let's see. Got a punch. We'll try to punch that bit out of the holder. There it is. Now we can see that it fits in there and there's some clearance to the frame rail so I'm going to try to I don't think I'm going to be able to put another socket on that with a ratchet that just looks like it's not nearly enough it's hard to see here but that's really no not much thicker than my finger width to the frame rail where this especially there's a little bolt right here so I'm gonna to have to use a wrench you can tell it's been leaking because you can see a slight sheen on the oil filter. Yeah, you can see the where I just put my finger across it. So that's how we know it's leaking. 12 millimeter. That sucks because that's such a short wrench. Fucking hell, it worked. Oh, shit. See that snap-on wrench just friggin' bend. I put Mr. Mr. Socket here. Okay. Get back on there. There we go. You can see it's starting to separate right there. There it goes. Well, here it is. As you can see, the seal didn't come out with it. So I'll have to pull that off the engine, clean it all up there where it seals this little adapter. And get it drained out, get the oil filter off, get a new one so I can put the whole thing back together. 
you can see there's a pin or an area right here uh, cast out for a pin, which is an alignment pin on the engine block itself. And it's designed to keep this orientated right so as you're screwing this down real tight, um, it'll keep it from rotating on you as you tighten it down. Get down here. You can see that alignment pin. It's just a roll pin. Going into the uh, engine block here. You can see the seal still on there. Let me see if I can pull that out. See it's kind of flattened out. And it's really hard. Kind of stiff. Doesn't really help. Oh. See, didn't even want to bend, it just cracked. So yep, definitely a good time to get rid of it. This is the seal kit. Part number JOP-4720363. Apparently I got it from Jeep and Off-Road Parts. I can't remember when, it was a while ago, but this is what we'll use to freshen this thing up. All right, so now I gotta get this nipple to come out and it's directly attached to this. So you can just push it out. Well, it went, felt it. There it goes. Just a little bit of gorilla pressure, and that's it. Now you can see this is the housing, just kind of a one cast piece unit that's been machined. Okay, so there it is, a little bit, a little cleaned up. O ring seal here, O ring seal here, and then the nipple. Now I'm going to check this nipple just to make sure there's no damage to it. I don't see anything that really stands out to me. And then I'll want to clean up the inside of there. Hopefully there's just a bunch of dirt and crap in there that I can just dig out with a pick. So we're going to work on that next. Okay, so just get this. I'm just going to have a little 90 degree pick here. And real careful, just kind of pull it out of there. This one seems a little bit more flexible than the one that was on the engine block itself. It may not have gotten as hot over the years because uh, it still actually feels pretty flexible getting this off of here. Just real careful. Try not to ding up the threads. Just get in there, push it out. There we go. So that one's off. Get the bigger one here. Just kind of, what I'm doing is just kind of working it in a circle here just to pull it out like that and it just will come right out. Get this cleaned up and then get the housing cleaned up and then we'll be ready to reassemble these two pieces. All right, I got the uh, nipple cleaned up. Make sure the machine surfaces are nice and clean. Check to make sure there was no varnish in them. There's no varnish in them, which means it's oil wasn't too hot. Cleaned up the housing a little bit. Just use some WD-40 and a uh, wire brush on the outside and then just gently wiped the inside down, uh, making sure to get all the residue off, but that'll be, that'll be fine. Make sure you don't leave any like lint or fibers inside the seal here or inside here or basically inside any part of this. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a couple of the seals here. I've got the larger of the two, which is gonna go on this part right here. So take your favorite oil and just get a little bit on your finger and work it into the seal here, lubricate it a little bit. Just take it and try not to roll it as you put it in and just kind of work it over. There we go. I'm just gonna kind of wipe the residue. Now I still have some oil on my fingers so I'll go ahead and lubricate the smaller seal. This is the one I want to be careful of because when the other seal came out, it went over these threads and it didn't really like it. 
<clears throat> there's not a whole lot you can do. Just keep it, keep it working gently. Don't try to, don't stretch it. Keep it kind of even the whole way, okay? And it just popped right in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get this whole thing wet with oil. This side cleaned out pretty decent. There's not a bunch of crap in there. There was a bunch of crap in there, which is why I couldn't bury this socket in there as deep as I wanted to, but now it goes in just fine. Now to put this together, I'm just gonna take this, stick it in the end here, and just kinda, and that's it. So now I need to go down to the store, get some Loctite, cause I'm gonna Loctite that sucker and I don't want it coming loose. And then I need to clean up at the engine bay, grab myself a new oil filter, and I'll put this thing back together for good. And hopefully this thing won't leak until the engine blows itself up, so. All right, went down to the store, got myself a replacement oil filter and a little bit of thread locker. Now, technically speaking, you don't really need to use thread locker here, but I don't want this thing to vibrate loose at all because if it does, then that's the end of my engine. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on the end of the threads here just to, just to kind of help um, lock it up here. So this uh, ceiling ring just kind of pops in here like this. And I've already got my hands are a little bit on the uh, oily side. So that will pop in there. We'll clean up the uh, engine block surface and get that installed. So the manual calls for 50 pound feet for the adapter, 35 maybe, I don't know. Between 35 and 50, we'll get the job done. Um, problem is you can't get a torque wrench down there. I suppose you could try to use a crow's foot to um, do it, but it would throw your torque off anyway. So we're just gonna tighten that thing within an inch of its life, just like it was when it came off. And hopefully the uh, red Loctite will hold it in place. Okay, now I didn't goop a whole lot of Loctite on there, just enough to cover a few threads, you can see right there. Um, we're gonna watch the orientation of this casting relief in here. That's gonna line up with the alignment pin on the engine block down here. I don't think you can see it, but it's like right here where my finger's at. So, <clears throat> we're gonna kinda just work this up around a couple of things. Just get the nipple kind of in there. I'm gonna try a, a bit of a different approach here. I pulled the nipple out just a little bit from the adapter housing. See if we can't bottom out the adapter housing first and then start twisting the nipple to get a, to get a couple of threads to bite so we don't have to sit there and fumble fuck with it too bad. Okay, it's kind of in there. So we'll take the good old wrench. I'm kind of holding the bit with one finger as I turn this. Having a uh, ratcheting wrench really helps. tighter than that by hand. Okay, there we go. Now, we'll just save this little guy because we don't know when we'll need to do this again, if we'll ever need to do it again, or if we have a buddy who needs help. Don't forget to lightly coat your oil filter seal. No 
one thing I do that's weird to some people is I like to date the filter and put my mileage on it. Okay, there it is. Now we'll see if that works. That's all there is to it. Go ahead and clean up your tools and get ready for the next project.